Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what I believe is a, a much larger revolution that's brewing in online education and just how uh, portentous that is, um, and then how Newton fits into that. So um, this is kind of the progression of humankind. Um, I think we're at the next phase now. And uh, I'm going to try to summarize uh, the history of human affairs in a few slides here. Um, and I'll, I'll fail, but I want to make a point, which is that um, that the history of education innovation, the history of education technology, has actually defined most of the great arcs of human history. And I believe we're on the, the verge of another great um, revolution. So um, the Great Leap Forward, as anthropologists ca uh, called it, was about 40,000 years ago. It was kind of the, the advent of language. And human, the, human race, the modern human race um, exploded uh, under the scene. Tool use exploded. Cave art exploded. Um, and then um, the next really big innovation, that was really the first big killer app for education was language. The next big innovation was numeracy, numbers, and, and, and writing around 10,000 years ago. And that um, allowed agriculture and animal husbandry to explode. And that uh, created the first civilizations. The next big revolution was the text in the academy. And we were literally using the, the, you know, the idea that you could take a text, um, write it over and over again, and take the great scientists of the day, Aristotle and so forth, and share them with you know, all the kings and nobles' children. Um, that was a, a big revolution. And Greco-Roman civilization resulted from that. And the, the bar at the bottom is basically a percent of the world's population that has access to basic education at that time. So it's still a very, very low percentage, but it inflects upward dramatically um, over a few hundred uh, years. The next big one, of course, is the printing press. This also took a couple hundred years to perfect, but there's another big inflection point upward. Um, basic a access to basic education um, goes up dramatically. Now you can take those texts that were produced and you can mass uh, by hand and you can mass, mass produce them. Now it's not just uh, the king's kids and the noble's kids. It's actually this whole merchant class that arose in Western Europe. Um, right around that, that time, and the Renaissance resulted. And the last big one, and this is totally ironic to me because I hated this one, um, was um, the early Industrial Revolution where you could take factory processes, you can turn a, uh, education into an assembly line, every child becomes a widget moving through that line. That sounds awful, and it, so we decry it today. But in fact, it was that revolution that drove the per capita cost of education so low that the Western world could institute compulsory K-12 education. And it's not um, an overstatement to say that literally every single thing that we take for granted today, and I mean everything about the modern world, is a result of that big revolution. And at the end of that, today, we're still at around 54% of the world's kids have access to, to primary education, complete sixth grade, um, and only about 22% secondary education. So we're still wasting about four-fifths. So despite all those revolutions, we're still wasting about four-fifths of our human capital globally. Um, it's such an appalling thing, and it's kind of a fixable thing. Uh, I, I just don't understand why people aren't like marching the streets with pitchfork, pitchforks. It's like it's so fixable today. We suddenly have the ability through online education to fix that. And I believe in the next generation, if the people in this room do what we need to do, we can get that up to 100%. Um, because uh, I, was, I was actually uh, born in Africa, and um, so you know, my parents had, you know, would, t would tell me stories about, like, in Mozambique, about how, you know, for some of the villages, it, the school was like the tree, and the teacher would come once or twice a week. And for places where there is no education at all, where the education is very, very bad, you can either supplement it or, or replace it entirely, the lack of education, with devices. Um, you know, people are going to solve the bandwidth problems, and they're going to solve the hardware problems, and Evan's going to solve the connectivity problems, and God bless you for that. I'm a big fan. Because um, believe me, we run into those problems constantly. Um, but once you can put an iPad um, or a, a similar device in the hands of any kid anywhere in the world, you suddenly can get that kid access to the world's greatest teachers and the world's greatest education technology. You know, the, in, the internet does exactly two things. It does distribution and data mining. Um, and so the distribution side of it, the access side of it, is incredibly important. That's the world I want to see. Um, here's what Newton does. We do data mining. So um, it turns out education is the world's biggest data industry today. It produces vastly more data than any other industry, or it can, if you can capture the data. The data are hard to capture, but they are capturable. So um, um, compared to other big data platforms, you know, Netflix and Amazon get, in, for their recommendation engines, get in, like, in the ones of actionable data per user per day, and Google and Facebook get in the tens of actionable data per user per day. Newton today, a typical user produces hundreds of thousands of usable data, and our most active users produce between 5 and 10 million. And the reason for that is that education just bleeds data. It produces an incredible amount of data. If you can get it, it's very hard to unlock it. But the data are there. And they're there because everything in education, every concept, the, down to the atomic concept level, every concept is very highly correlated to every other concept. So when you do five or 10 minutes worth of messing around in Google, you produce a few dozen data points for Google. You do that work for Newton today on, say, 
some concept in equilateral triangles, and now I know that Mark is in the top six percentile nationally in equilateral triangles for that one concept, I can imagine, I can predict that he's in the top six or seven or eight percentile for all 40 equilateral triangles concepts, because they're so highly correlated to one another, and that he's probably in the top nine percentile nationally at all triangles concepts, and squares, and rectangles, and so on and so forth. So that's, there's a, a very predictable correlation effect. And there's also like a hierarchy effect. If he's that good at equilateral triangles, he's got to be at least that good at lines and angles and things that, that build up to it. So in other words, when you do work in Newton today, if you've gone to the hard work of making it possible to get the data out, it'll just bleed data. Um, and so what we can do is um, know everything about what you know. And so within a few hours of using a Newton-powered product, we partner with textbooks, textbook companies, and schools to power their content. Um, Within a few hours of using a product, the product is literally unique, right? Like, it's a totally insane thing that we ask students to do right now. We ask children, hey, here's this completely faceless bureaucracy with a bunch of completely arbitrary rules and perverse incentives, the education system, and you need to adapt to that. You, a child, need to figure that out, right? Because it's not the case, obviously, that every child learns everything the best in the exact same way. That, that, that's statistically impossible. It's ludicrous, right? But that's what we ask people, kids to do. It should be the opposite. The system should adapt to them, and that's what my company tries to do. So within a few hours of using a Newton-powered product, it's literally a unique experience to you. And here's what we know. We know to the percentile what you know, down to the atomic concept level. We know when you're going to fail at things ahead of time. We can pre predict failure ahead of time. Why? Because we know you haven't mastered the concepts that build up to what you're going to learn next Tuesday, or because the things you're going to learn next Tuesday are very highly correlated with, the, with things that always give you trouble. So what do we do? Well, we have a big partnership with Pearson for higher education. We're powering about a million Pearson students by the end of this year. It'll be about 10 million by the end of next year. And we're powering their higher ed products throughout North America. And so um, the first time any student comes to us, they get a free lifetime learning profile. It captures everything that they know down to the percentile. And it also can capture how they learn best. You learn science best with video clips instead of text or with 32% video and, uh, and, you know, as, as, as your optimal ratio for video and text. Well, Newton knows that. You learn math best between 8.13 and 9.42 AM. We know that. That 35-minute burst you do at lunch every day, you're not retaining any of that. We know that. Just go hang out with your friends. Come back at 6.30 PM. Um, you, you study English language best in 34-minute bite sizes. At the 36-minute mark, your click rate always begins to decline. You start missing questions you otherwise get right. Your time on task increases. We know you're getting bored of it. We can predict boredom in advance and move you on to the next thing. So um, it takes a lot of work to unlock that. You've got to get publishers and the people who have the content to, to um, literally tag every single nugget, every single sentence of their content to a taxonomy like this. But then we can use the combined data of everybody to power everybody's learning. So in the next year, I said we'll have 10 million higher ed students from Pearson. A few years down the line, we'll have had 30 million users just from Pearson in terms of higher ed. The 30 million at first shows up to learn rules of exponents. Great. Let's go find everybody who's psychometrically equivalent to that kid. Right? Their, their, their learning profiles are just the same. They're very, very similar. Great. Let's take those people and ask who learned rules of exponents the very best. Through sheer blind, dumb luck, they happen to do the perfect thing, the top one tenth of 1% of people who were just like you but did the perfect thing for themselves to learn rules of exponents. If you've got enough data, this is just mechanical now. So we can go take the combined data power of that network of people who, through sheer blind luck, did the perfect thing for themselves, and hence for you, because they're just like you, for that concept. And for, every th for that concept and every concept you ever learn, we're going to take the combined power of that entire network of, within a few years, will be tens of millions of people, and before long, will be hundreds of millions of people. And we're going to use it to learn, help you learn every single concept in the best possible way. And we can use that to power tutoring. We're adding a feature called adaptive tutoring. You want to ask a question, don't get, you don't want to get materials, you actually want to talk to someone who's online right now, great. Newton will go find the people who psychometrically are just like you, but who, who absolutely know the answer to your questions. Um, and then we can say, well, whose learning profile is the most similar to yours? Maybe those people can explain it best to you, because their learning style is the same. Let's find the people whose learning style is the same and who actually learned that concept, whatever you're asking about, the best, because maybe those people have something special to teach you. So we can take the wisdom of crowds and we can harness it with Newton's atomic concept level adaptive AI to find the perfect 10 people who are online right this second for you to go get some social um, adaptive tutoring from. So here's an example of a screenshot. And um, like, let me just show you what this looks like really fast. I think I'm, how much time do I have? You're over. You're over. <laughs> so I have negative two These are actual students. That's one student's um, learning profile. And if I had more time, I'd show you a bunch of these. But you'll see that they're just, those are different, every, those nodes are just different nuggets in the course, different packets of content. And you know, some students, if I had time to show you more, you'd see that some paths are very short and some paths are very long. Um, let's do the next one. The next one's pretty cool. I'm going to show you, um, this one is actually um, an entire cohort at ASU, um, country's biggest university. These are 3,000 students. You'll notice that some, have, um, some are going very fast or some are going very slow. It speeds up around finals. It slows down. Some paths, like this student you know, here, 
is struggling, like, you know, let's, let's intervene there and tell the, the faculty about them. That's, that's, that's kind of like an organic thing. That's literally every student. And you'll notice that no two paths are even remotely similar. It's unique learning every single day, optimized for each student down to the atomic concept. Thank you. Change lives. Change organizations. Change organizations. Change the world.